Good morning students. Today we will start with our next topic, the integration of the princely states in India after independence. Let us refresh our previous topics just before going into the next one. I hope you all have understood the previous topics also. The earlier topic, we spoke about the Indian Independence Act 1947. It was the last legislation act of the British. And this was made in the intention of giving independence to the Indians. So this was the last act. Now, uh, during this time, the Second World War began. And it was noted that Japan also had entered into it. And this was the period when the British government felt jittery and they wanted the support of the Indian government, Indians to, sub to face or to combat the Japanese. For this, Cripps was sent to India and Cripps made a suggestion saying that he would allow India to form the constituent assembly and at the same time give dominion status to India after the end of the war. But the Indian National Congress as well as the Muslim League did not accept this and this paved the way for Quit India movement and after this we got our independence. Now when this was done it was, it was elections time in England and in England it was the Labour Party which won and Atli became the Prime Minister. And as soon as he became the Prime Minister, he also made a suggestion saying that it is Indians' right to form independent India and it is their right to form the, the constitution. And he gave provisions for this. Immediately after this, we got our independence and independence was phrased for 1947, 15th August. But the sad part of this is that it was also the day of partition of India and Pakistan separately. So India got all its powers, the British government transferred the powers to India on 15th August 1947. After this, Jawaharlal Nehru became the prime, first Prime Minister and he was the one who gave more importance to the formation of the constituent assembly and the constitution was framed and the first Lok Sabha elections also were conducted for free India in the year 1951-52. Now coming to the next topic that is the integration of princely states. There was a haphazard way of the framing of the states. These states were all mixed up because why? In British India, we had two types. One is the British Indian provinces as well as the princely states. The British Indian provinces handed over or transferred all the powers to the Indians on August 15, 1947 itself. Whereas the princely states did not do this because they had freedom, they had got back their earlier status which was before 1947 wherein they enjoyed a certain freedom from the British government earlier and that freedom was for all their internal matters. So they were not ready to give up this. At that this point it is called as the paramountcy of the British. After some time, there was the lapse of paramountcy, that is on 15th August 1947, this paramountcy of this two was lapsed, it came to an end. That time, these princely states regained their earlier status, which legally they were independent earlier and that was the time they were free. Now they had an option, either they could join India or they could join Pakistan. There were a few small states. These small states understood that they cannot 
continue with the maintenance with their little bit of income hence they gave into it and they agreed to join india immediately after independence sardar vallabhai patel was given the in charge of the indian states department so he headed it and vp menon became its secretary now they were in the lead to integrate these princely states after that the instrument of accession act was formed wherein three subjects were acceded that is defense foreign affairs as well as communication hence that was agreed upon and the, these kings that is all these earlier kings were agreed upon that they had also said that they will be given honorable positions if they join india and they were also assured of all rights and privileges after handing or joining the indian union during that time we had 565 states all the states agreed to join india except three states junagadh hyderabad and kashmir the process of integration as suggested by sardar patel was a threefold process this integration process is called as the patel scheme the three methods of it he made suggestions was first one the merger of small states with the adjoining provinces all these small states come together with the other provinces and becomes a larger state 216 states merged together and formed a state 24 states merged with orissa 14 states merged together and was called as the central province pudukote and madras merged together and this was included in the constitution as part b the next method is grouping of small states wherein all the st small states come together and form one big state and this big state will have a ruler the ruler of compared to all the small states the biggest states ruler will be made as the raja pramukha this raja pramukha will be the head of all this small states put together as one big state for example the union of saurashtra and patiala and east punjab states union which is also called as PEPSU that is Patiala and East Punjab states union the th these states are called as part b states these states are called as part b states and the third method is integration into the ch chief commissioners province that is integrating as to the commission's province that is all the smaller 61 states which were earlier centrally administered areas will be converted into chief commissioners province for example himachal pradesh ajmer kurg kutch bihar etc and all this together is called as part c states all the states acceded to join india whereas three states had refused that is junagadh hyderabad and kashmir now we'll take up junagadh junagadh the nawab was a ruler his name was mohammad khan he did not want to join india whereas he wanted to join pakistan but the people did not want this they wanted to join india people went against the nawab and he ran away from junagadh as soon as he went away plebiscite was announced plebiscite meaning either the people of the whole country or of a certain district has to give their opinion with regard to the government or with regard to the ruler and the people of junagadh agreed and said 
that they would remain in India itself. Hence, Junagadh was later on merged with Saurashtra. The next state, the largest state of princely states was Hyderabad. This was surrounded by Indian territories. The ruler of Hyderabad was the Nizam, Asad Usman Ali Khan. He wanted independent status. He did not want to join India. He made a standstill agreement in November 1947 to maintain the independent status quo which he had before 1947. But the Indian government felt that the independent status for Hyderabad would be a security threat. Hence, they refused. During this time, people conducted movements against this Nawab for his oppressive rule. And for in this, all the peasantry, the women, the communists, as well as the Congress joined together and they protested. The Nawab had his own paramilitary force, which was called as the Razakars. This paramilitary force called the Razakars were very much abusive of the people. They were ostracizing the people. They were, people were being harassed. These Razakars raped the people. They murdered the people. They looted these people. They targeted all the non-Muslims. And to end this anarchy being conducted by the Razakars, the Indian army had to enter Hyderabad in the year 1948. And it was this police action to stop these Razakars, which was called as the Operation Polo. Immediately after this, the Nizam surrendered and it was followed by complete accession of Hyderabad into the state of Indian unions. The next topic is Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir was a princely state. Its ruler was Hari Singh who was a Hindu and it had a population of more number of Muslims that is 77 percent of them were Muslims. They did not want to merge with India nor with Pakistan but they wanted an independent state. Sheikh Abdullah led a popular movement of the National Conference to remove this king. They did not want to join Pakistan either. They thought of themselves as Kashmiris and they wanted to have or retain their own culture called Kashmiriyat. But Pakistan wanted Kashmir under its complete control because there was more Muslim population. In October 1947, the tribal infiltrators of Pakistan invaded Kashmir. This created lots of problems. This forced the Maharaja to take military help from India. India agreed to give military help but it said we shall sign an agreement called the instrument of accession and this was signed on 26th October 1947. Sheikh Abdullah accepted this and both were happy about this. Thus this Kashmir became a bone of contention. It became a topic for dispute because Pakistan was not happy with the instrument of accession because this instrument of accession is actually a legal document which was executed by the Maharaja Hari Singh and as per this Hari Singh decided that, ex that it will accede to the dominion of Indian Union. To solve this, the Constituent Assembly made certain provisions and Article 370 was made. And this Article 370 provided for a separate constitution to the state and it also gave other provisions like defense, communication and foreign affairs which will be from the Indian Union, 
later on, in the year 1950, the United Nations Security Council appointed Sir Owen Dixon as the UN representative to help and solve the JNK dispute, that is to solve whatever differences Jammu and Kashmir had in the Indian Union, all that has to be solved. But even till now, the UN Security Council could not solve that problem. In 1951, another attempt by the Constituent Assembly, all of them met in Kashmir to frame a new constitution. In 1954, February, the accession of the state was ratified, was accepted upon, was agreed upon by the Constituent Assembly. After the ratification in 1954, in November 1956, the adopted of the constitution and this gave legalizing the status of Jammu and Kashmir as the unit of Indian Union. That means in from 1956 onwards they had a constitution and this was giving them a legal status as the unit of Indian Union. This we need to note or we need to take it as a significant event because this became the constitution of JNK was declared as the accession of the state to India as final. That means they also had agreed that they will accede to India and this was their final decision. Both Sheikh Abdullah and the first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru together agreed upon, made an agreement and said from then onwards the Prime Minister of Jammu and Kashmir will be redesignated as the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir. In 1990, Kashmir came under the grip of the militants who were demanding a separate Kashmir nation. This was the main cause of conflict between India and Pakistan. There were many intrusions which were made by Pakistan, including the Kargil war in 1999, many people died. This was under the president's rule and the armed forces were brought in after a long time. In 2002, free elections were conducted and there they said that Article 370 shall be revoked as it did not allow full integration of the states with the Indian Union. Recently, in 2019, Article 370 was scrapped, revoked and Jammu and Kashmir was made as an union territory. Now, Jammu and Kashmir will be governed by the laws which are applicable to other Indian citizens. After some time, that was again in October 2019, Ladakh also was made as a union territory. And this process of integration culminated as per the Seventh Amendment, all the states will be integrated together. That is, all Part A as well as Part B states will be made combined into one list. And the Indian, Indian states lost their identity. Whereas, before they became one political organization called as one Indian state which has one constitution. Sardar Vallabhai Patel played a very important role in the integration of the state. He was a man of great administrative skill. He was a great personality. He was a man of astute statesmanship. He had intense patriotism. He handled the kings of the princely states with patience, with tact and sympathy. He was the one person who could convince all these kings of the princely states to join the Indian Union.
because all the princely states kings were not agreeable and it was he who did this intact he was called as the man of iron will it was this integration of states which was the greatest contribution to independent india by sardar vallabhai patel now once the states were integrated we had to reorganize the states this reorganization of states had to be done that means redrawing of internal boundaries the indian states were necessary because before 1947 all those princely states Brit british indian states were all in a haphazard manner provisions were for multilingual multicultural there were so many more than 500 states and what were existing before independence which were converted into 12 units hence all the redrawing of these internal boundaries had to be done hence reorganization of states had to take place the present constitution divided the territories into four categories they called it as part a part b part c and part d states part a consisted of andhra assam bihar bombay madhya pradesh madras orissa punjab united provinces west bengal all of these were earlier under the british indian provinces coming to the part b states it consisted of hyderabad jammu and kashmir madhya bharat mysore patiala pepsu rajasthan saurashtra travancore and kochi all these were earlier chief commissioners states next coming to part c Ajmer, Bhopal, Kog, Delhi, Himachal Pradesh, Kutch, Manipur, Tripura, and Vindhya Pradesh came based on the Part C states. Part D was Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Both these Part C state as well as Part D states was ruled by the president. He was aided or he was helped with by the lieutenant governor or the chief commissioner. Now these were based on a certain different categories, but the states has to be redrawn. They had to see to it that the political unity of the country retains. The unity of India is to be retained. Integration had to be intact. and it had the states had to be reorganized or redrawn hence they decided or they came to a conclusion that language and cultural plurality can be the base for redrawing of the states of indian union language became the principle for reorganization linguistic principles for reorganization was assumed as a base for the reorganization of indian states they had four principles the first one was language is closely related to culture and customs of the people hence people will get attached to their language or to their mother tongue second spread of ed education and literacy can occur only through the medium of their mother tongue a child or a person gets more access or feels more comfortable when something is told to him or her in his mother tongue so either it is education or literacy it becomes more important when it is through mother tongue third to a common man democracy can be real only if politics and administrations are conducted in this language and the fourth one is linguistic state can promote education administration and judicial activity in their mother tongue administration education as well as judicial activity can be undertaken on the basis of their mother tongue hence it was assumed that free india will base its boundaries on the basis of language that means boundaries will be formed on the basis of the language soon after independence due to certain problems like partition political dislocation law and order problems and the kashmir issue 
there was a need at this time to consolidate the linguistic states. Soon after independence, due to partition, political dislocation, law and order problems, and the Kashmir issue, there were disturbances. And this was the need of the R, where we had to consolidate the linguistic states. The distribution of the states based on their language had to be done. Hence, two committees were set up. One as the Linguistic Province Commission, which was head, headed by S.K. Dar, and the JVP committee was set up, Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel, and Pattabhi Sitaramaya. These people, these two committees in the year 1948, advised against the creation of a linguistic state for the time being. They said this may lead to problems or it will be a threat to the national unity. This led to popular movements in different states, especially Andhra. For a long time, they wanted a separate state called Andhra. And this movement became stronger and stronger day by day. In the year 1952, Poti Sri Ramulu undertook fast unto death. And he said that he, he will fast unto death until Andhra is given a separate identity. But within 58 days of his fasting, he died. But immediately after that, the decision was taken by the government and Andhra was given its separate independent status in the year 1953. The success of Andhra was a motivation to all the other states to agitate. Many other states got motivated and they were also encouraged to agitate, to get independent states. To meet this demand, the State Reorganization Committee was set up with Justice Fazil Ali, K. M. Panikar and Hridaynath Kunzru as members. And these members were asked to examine the issue and recommend certain principles of reorganization, keeping in view the mindset of keeping the unity of India. After discussions and debates, the state's reorganization the bill came, came up in the year 1956. It was introduced in the parliament in the month of April 1956 and it was passed in the parliament on November 1956. Its main features were abolishing the distinction between part A, B, C and D states establishing of two categories of units, one is states and the second is union territories. Third one is the abolition of Raj Pramukhas. This act provided for 14 states and six union territories. After the acceptance of the principle of linguistic states, all the states did not immediately become linguistic because there were a lot of differences between different states. There were bilingual state. Bilingual Bombay state had Gujarati speaking people as well as Marathi speaking people. All these people popularly agitated because they wanted two different states. One was the state of Maharashtra was formed and another was Gujarat. Next in line is Punjab, where there were Hindi speaking people as well as Punjabi speaking people. Here also they conducted certain different movements and in 1966 they were divided into Punjab and Haryana as two states. Later on, the Sikh communalists who were led by the Akali Dal party, the Hindu communalists were led by the Bharatiya Jansangh. Both these fought for linguistic issues, but they also promoted communal politics. This was against the law. Hence, the State Reorganization Committee refused to accept their demands because they were dividing the states further based on language and communal politics. 
Hence, they did not allow or solve their communal problems. Hence, so many other states came in. That is, Meghalaya was formed on 1972, Tripura in 1972, Mizoram was formed in 1987. Like this, we've been having different states and a few union territories. But as of now, after a lot of changes in 2014, again Andhra Pradesh asked for another further division that was Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. So in 2014, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana was divided. Thus, based on language, everybody had a view or an opinion that it would weaken the unity of the nation. But in otherwise, we can say it has also strengthened the unity of the nation. Similarly, in the year 2019, just recently, we have had Jammu and Kashmir being made as a union territory. And Ladakh also became a union territory. And henceforth, as of today, we have 28 states and 8 union territories in India. As of today, the Indian states and the union territories are as follows. There are 28 states. It comes under alphabetical order, which will make it easier for you to remember. Even the union territories also, you can remember in the same manner. Andhra Pradesh, Arunal Chal Pradesh, Assam. You can remember it as A to the power of 3 or A cube. Bihar, Chhattisgarh. Goa, Gujarat. So, G to the power of 2. Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand. Karnataka, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh. Maharashtra, Manipur, Meghalaya. Mizoram, Nagaland, Odisha. Punjab, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, Tripura, T to the power of 2, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and Telangana which was formed in the year 2014. Now coming to the 8 union territories, there are slight changes which was not there earlier. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Chandigarh, Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. This has been combined. Delhi, Lakshadweep, Puducherry, Jammu and Kashmir, and Ladakh. Now, this ends up this chapter. Now, I shall give you all a few questions so that you can write down the essay answers which you will have in this chapter itself. One of the questions is, write a short note on the interim government. Write a short note on the interim government. Write a short note on the first general elections. Write a short note on the first general elections. Next question. Explain the provisions of the Indian Independence Act 1947. Explain the Indian Independence Act 1947. Here you need to write all the provisions which has been specified under this act. Next question. Describe the accession of Junagadh, Hyderabad and Kashmir in brief. Describe the accession of Junagadh, Ahidrabad and Kashmir. List out the states and union territories of India. List out the states and union territories of India. Thank you. Have a nice day students.